Jesus whispers sweet and low, and I am with thee, peace, peace, and in all of my step and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. My life was wrecked by sin and strife. This girl filled my heart with pain. Jesus stepped across the broken streets. Said my love is what's again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know. Fills my every longing. Keeps me singing as I go. In the riches of His grace, resting in the sheltering wings, always looking on His smiling face, serving the Lord as loud and sing. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. Coming back to welcome me Far beyond the starry sky I will sing my flight to worlds unknown I shall reign with Him on high Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go King 
before you and again we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to worship you you say when two or more are gathered that you are here amongst us and we welcome you here with us this morning we pray that you will open our hearts and pre- open our hearts and prepare our minds for what it is that you have to share for us this morning thanks again god we love you so much in jesus name amen amen you can be seated <laughs> so welcome here this morning so welcome here this morning. Um, if I, we'd like to invite you to sign the clipboard that's in front of you somewhere in the here row. And if you have any prayer requests, there's also some prayer slips there and you can hand those in during the offering. This morning before announcements, we have a love gift and I'd like to ask Sherry to come up. You are an awesome minister to our church, and we just want to thank you so much for all your music (laughs) that you do and for your work on the missions team. Thank you. you Uh, We're so blessed in our church to have so many people with so much talent and willingness. We, I'm going to go on to announcements, so today we would like to invite you to join us at the picnic in the park. Um, We'd ask that you bring lawn chairs, beverages, and whatever you'd like to eat or share to the Riverside Park between 12.45 and 1, somewhere around there, and there will be a barbecue or two along. Tonight we invite you to come out to to a great concert by the Singing Hills Hills at 7 o'clock, 
Invite your friends and family. There's no admission for this, but there will be a love offering. Join us for coffee this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Details you'll find in the bulletin. This Tuesday at 7 p.m., come and meet Tim and Kelly Hutton, new missionaries who will be serving in Bolivia. They will share a short presentation and then coffee and refreshments will be served. Camp starts on Thursday. If you can help transport some items to camp, please let us know today. Please note there will be um, church at camp and here as well on Sunday. I could ask the ushers to come forward, please. Let's just, <coughs> let's just pray. Lord, we thank you so much for how you provide for our needs, for all that you give to us, and we thank you for this opportunity to give back a portion of what it is that you give to us. May you bless what people give, and may you bless the people who give it. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. He became sin. He humbled himself and carried the cross. Looks so amazing. Looks so amazing. Jesus, Messiah, name above all. Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, rescue for sinners, a ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. So amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer.
before we move forward with scripture, I would like to welcome Carrie here this morning. It's good to see you. Um, I didn't have the pleasure of knowing you as well as many folks here, but welcome here this morning. We're glad you could join us. Our scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 38. If I'm struggling, I'm, I'm just going to preface this because I'm, I have new contacts and they're not working really well. So I might need to be going like this, but I didn't realize that it would be this, this much. So anyway, our, our scripture reading this morning is Psalm 38. Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Your arrows have pierced me and your hand has come down on me. Because of your wrath, there is no health in my body. There is no soundness in my bones because of my sin. My guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds fester and are loathsome because of my sin, sinful folly. I am bowed down and brought very low. All day long I go about mourning. My back is filled with searing pain. There is no health in my body. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I groan in anguish of heart. All my longings lie open before you, Lord. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart pounds, my strength fails me. Even the light has gone from my eyes. My friends and companions avoid me because of my wounds. My neighbors stay far away. Those who want to kill me set their traps. Those who would harm me talk of my ruin. All day long they scheme and lie. I am like the deaf who cannot hear, like the mute who cannot speak. I have become like one who does not hear, whose mouth can offer no reply. Lord, I wait for you. You will answer, Lord my God. For I said, do not let them gloat or exalt themselves over me when my feet slip. For I am about to fall and my pain is, is ever with me. I confess my iniquity. I am troubled by my sin. Many have become my enemies without cause. Those who hate me without reason are numerous. Those who repay my good with evil lodge accusations against me, though I seek only to do what is good. Lord, do not forsake me. Do not be far from me, my God. Come quickly to help me, my Lord and my Savior. Let's just join our hearts again in prayer. Father, we're so grateful that you love your people. We're so grateful that, that you provide for us, that you care for us, and that, that you're all-knowing. We appreciate so much um, your love and our opportunity to be able to come to you with our cares and concerns and our rejoicing. This morning, Lord, I'd like to lift some of our church family up to you. You know their needs, God, and we just ask that you would meet their needs where they're at that you would bring comfort to them, and that you would wrap them in your love, letting them feel your presence as they continue on their journey. We lift Rosemary, Brenda, Dale, Kathy, Doug, Kelly, both Cornies, Ken, Alden, Karen, and Lorene. You know their need, Lord. We just lift them to you. We pray for our folks in long-term care, Kay and Orville, we ask that you continue to just keep them and watch over them. We also pray for Dale and Marie's granddaughter, Emily, who has been diagnosed with a leg tumor. We pray for wisdom with the surgeons, and we pray, Lord, that we just pray your touch upon her, God, that you would just heal her and comfort her and her family in this process. I'd like to pray for for Richard and Olga, in a recent uh, fall, Lord, we just pray that you would um, just help the healing and the recovery from the concussion and uh, that you would just strengthen and um, encourage Olga as she moves forward. Pray for the Graf family and their recent loss of their grandson. We ask God that you would minister to their hearts, that you would comfort them in their loss We pray for Jean Dickey. As she's moved to a new home, Father, we just pray that you would help her to adjust well, that you would surround her with people 
um, who could uh, just uh, encourage her heart and uh, just help her to um, function, Lord, as she needs to, as she uh, is in back at, back at home. We also pray for our CBM and all its ministries. The beacon of hope, Lord, that you give us to be in this world. We're just so grateful for those missionaries who go forward and um, to share the love of Jesus Christ. We pray for Mies Kay and uh, Baptist Church in Bolivia. And we ask that you continue to encourage their hearts, God, that you continue to protect them and give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of what, uh, what it is that they need there. We pray for Rock Solid Refuge and our Teen Challenge students, Sean and Michael. We know that addiction is a tough world, God, and we pray that you would just strengthen the people who are providing the service, that you would encourage the hearts of those people that are seeking the service, and that you would meet every need of those two uh, organizations. We pray for our compassion children, Fandy and Resty. We also pray for those around the world that are in prison because of their Christian faith. Lord, what courage it takes to do that, we have no idea. And I just pray that you will continue to protect them, that you would continue to give them boldness and courage to share the faith of Jesus Christ. We pray for our government, all levels, asking for wisdom and knowledge as they continue to lead our country, our province, and our community. We ask that you would continue to put godly people in place who make decisions on the best, um, best of their ability, Lord, keeping their faith first and foremost. We pray for our church, we pray for our, our church council, we pray for Pastor Joel, for Penny, and for our members of our church, our family. We just ask, Lord, that you would continue to bond us together, that you would continue to strengthen us as a church, that you would expand our territory, that you would just uh, continue to meet every need that's here. We pray for our community, Lord. We pray for those non-believers in our community. We ask that you would draw upon their spirits and bring them to a Christian or evangelical church that could uh, share the gospel of Christ with them. We pray for those traveling on holidays and we ask for journey mercies. We pray that you will just um, bring them home safely. We also pray for Eastside Church of God and the good work that they do in this community. We ask that you would continue to prosper their ministry, that you would continue to encourage their hearts and give them strength as they share the gospel of Jesus Christ. We lift these things to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And let's stand together again. Redeemed our love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. This child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, this child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus, no language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of His presence with me do within newly dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeem, redeem, his child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer, I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent, his love is the theme of my song. Redeem, redeem, redeem by the blood of the Lamb. This child and forever I am I know I shall see in his beauty The king in his laws I delight Who lovingly guardeth my footsteps And giveth me song in the night Redeemed, redeemed Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb Redeemed Redeemed is child and forever I am from everlasting to everlasting you are God from everlasting 
trusting you are God. From everlasting again. Everlasting, everlasting you are God. Everlasting, everlasting you are God. In holiness you stand secure to call your shifting sand and changed by all the vanities of man as the nations rise upon the sovereignty remains you are you are you are the one true God Everlasting, everlasting, you are God. From everlasting, everlasting, you are God. In faithfulness, you love extends to times of turbulence, adopting those who call upon your name, and every generation joins in songs of grateful praise, you are, you are, you are the one true Everlasting, everlasting, you are God. Everlasting, everlasting, you are God. Eternal, immortal. God, eternal, immortal, invisible God, eternal, immortal, invisible God. Amen. Please turn and shake hands with some folks you haven't met this morning yet, and then you can be seated. And I'll go get my sermon, which is left on my desk. Did anybody, uh, okay, anybody meet anybody new this morning? Good, good. 
Does anybody meet anybody old this morning? Oh, never mind. There might be a few of us. I didn't shake anybody's hand, so it couldn't have been me. I was getting my sermon, which I forgot, on my, on my desk. Just throw it. Thank you. Oh, well, so good morning, everyone. Let's not talk about football. Okay, good. All right, so... All, all, I, all I can say is Wilbert is sitting really snug as a rug of bug right now. Look, at he's got a big smile. Oh, my goodness. Is he happy at home, Rosemary, too? Is he doing more chores and stuff like that because his football team is winning? No? Too happy Thursday night. Well, oh, well, fair enough. <laughs> oh, anyways, well, we're continuing on our series on Jacob and Esau. And today we're going to look at Jacob's ladder. It's kind of part... It's part two of part two of Jacob and Esau. Uh, if you tuned in last week, uh, we covered the, the story where Jacob took the blessing. So he took the birthright year, uh, years earlier uh, from his brother Esau. Uh, the birthright would be kind of like the inheritance, I guess is the best way to put that. Um, you know, and I suppose in some of our families, uh, somebody getting all the inheritance isn't that big of a deal. Um, but I'm pretty sure in Jacob and Esau's family with Isaac and Rebekah that it was a big deal because they had a lot of stuff and they were quite wealthy. And uh, Esau sold his birthright or his inheritance for how much? A pot of stew. Or even a bowl of stew. Maybe not even a whole pot. I think you'd get the whole pot for that. But anyways. Years later, uh, Isaac wants to give the blessing to his son Esau even though God told him he's supposed to give it to Jacob. And Esau goes out hunting, Jacob comes back, his mom dresses him up in sheepskin so he's nice and hairy like his brother, and then his brother blesses him, and that's what we covered last week. And so we pick up the story, uh, after this has all happened, um, Jacob has received the official family blessing, he's received the official blessing that that came down from Abraham to Isaac and now to Jacob. Um, there was a, a specific blessing which was going to be uh, for the tribe of Israel. Jacob's name is going to change to Israel in a bit. And that's why there's only one blessing available in this particular case. So we're going to pick it up starting at verse 1 of chapter 28. So Isaac called for Jacob and blessed him. So this is again now. So he's already given them the official blessing, but now some time has transpired and uh, he's going to be heading off. And then he commanded him, Do not marry a Canaanite woman. Go at once to Padam Aram, to the house of your father, your mother's father, Bethuel. Take a wife for yourself there, from among the daughters of Laban, your mother's brother. May God Almighty bless you and make you fruitful and increase your numbers until you become a community of peoples. Where did, where did Isaac get his wife from? Well, technically his servant got the wife, but where did he get his wife from? Same place. Right? Uh, Isaac's servant went and all the way to Patamaran and, and talked to the gang that's there, found uh, Rebecca and brought her back. And then she married Rebecca. He married Rebecca. So Isaac's sitting here with Jacob and Esau. Esau's already been married, by the way. We'll t- talk about that in a minute. He says, son, I don't want you marrying any of these local girls. They're all trash. And they may have been. Now, why do you think he really didn't like the Canaanite women? Why do you think it was a problem for him to marry the local Canaanite woman. Anybody want to take a shot at that? I'm sorry, what? Okay, the bloodline was kind of important that he wanted to sort of keep it all in the family. Wait a minute, that's not healthy. Um, But that was part of it. But there might have been more going on with the Canaanite women in general. What what may have been the issue that they were facing that even Isaac didn't want his son marrying a Canaanite? Okay, yeah, they were, they were, yes, they were worshiping idols, which was also pretty common everywhere else, but they were particularly nasty people. So later on, when uh, Joshua comes and they take over the promised land, uh, something that's lost uh, to many people is the people in Canaan were extremely, extremely evil. And they were involved in all kinds of idol worship, which often involved things like baby sacrifice, child sacrifice, and things like that. Uh, and so they were not a particularly nice people. And so Isaac wants his son to not marry from the local girls. And we know that nothing turns the head of a man like a woman. 
And that's why the children of Israel later on are told, please don't marry the local girls, marry only girls from the Jewish community. Because they know that where, when the head gets turned, the heart is sure to follow. And if your new wife uh, doesn't worship Yahweh, but worships idols and is involved in all these other things, then your heart is going to go there too. So this is the same thing I think that Isaac's worried about with, with Jacob. He wants him to make sure that he, one, doesn't marry some of the local girls who are, who are probably part of that problem. And two, he wants to also ensure the bloodlines are still the same. So we carry on. He continues another blessing. So here's another blessing he's giving him. May he give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham so that you may take possession of the land which you now reside as a foreigner, the land God gave to Abraham. Then Isaac sent Jacob on his way and he went to Padamaran to Laban, son of Bethuel, the Aramean, the brother of Rebekah, who was mother of Jacob and Esau. So he's going to his cousins. Uh, he's going to Uncle Laban. Uncle Laban... We're going to meet him a little bit more a little bit later. But he's the same guy that when the servant went to pick up Rebecca, he wanted Rebecca to stay a little longer. Remember? He said, oh, you need to stay some longer. And we didn't really know what he was up to at that point. But as we get to know Uncle Laban, we're going to find out that he kind of, he was kind of trying to take advantage of the situation. And Jacob's going to be the beneficiary of Laban's tricks, just like many people who are a beneficiary of Jacob's tricks in the weeks ahead. But we'll get to that when we get there. But here is another, yet another blessing. May he give you and your descendants the blessing given to Abraham. So here's the specific blessing, which is that you, you and your descendants specifically are going to inherit the land. And that's why that blessing didn't go to Esau. It went to Jacob because it was only for his particular descendants that the land was going to be for. So the Abraham blessing was to Abraham was going to have the land, and then it went to Isaac, he was going to have the land, and then it was to Jacob, he was going to have the land. By the way, which one actually got the land? Which one of those three guys actually got the land? Zero of them. Wait a minute, didn't God promise him to get the land? God's promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob doesn't actually get fulfilled until Joshua comes through after Moses. This is four, 500 years later. The, re the amazing thing is, is that God's promise was intact the whole time. His promise was to Abraham and his seed, to Isaac and his seed, to Jacob and his seed, and the family that goes on. And we're gonna, I'm going to show you a little bit of a chart later uh, showing how that family thing works out. But God's promise was completely in in, in, in complete 100% guarantee in action the entire time, even though the people that he promised to never actually got the promise. How is that even possible? How can you get a promise but yet not get the promise? Because God has a system whereby he blesses and passes on his blessings from generation to generation. And the promises that we are given, we may not actually get them all, but we know that they're going to come to our family, our friends, or perhaps our church family looking a little bit extended. So the promise is, is in fact fulfilled. And amazingly, there's even a gap. So after the children of Israel get the land of Israel, which was Canaan at this time, you go to the time of Jesus. After Jesus comes and goes back to heaven, guess what? The land disappears again. And then they get it again in 1946. It comes back. So even another 2,000 years doesn't prevent the promise from being fulfilled again and again. So, the promise is still, you and your descendants will get the land. And there's a strong connection that if my kids get it, then it's, I got it too. I'm not talking about spanking, okay? If my kids get it, then I get it too. Even if I'm not around to actually receive that, I know that they are blessed. Do you know that your, your forefathers, pretty well everybody's forefathers here, except for the Filipinos, they are the forefathers. They went to a new land, right? They went to a new land, and we reap the blessings of that new land. They didn't necessarily have that great of a time when they first got here. Get Jake to tell you his stories at length, because he will, about the, the early days. And, and many of the older folks here know about, the, you may not have been the ones who came, but you were children of the ones who came, or perhaps grandchildren, and you knew how tough it was for them. Imagine being a housewife five miles from anybody else in a house made out of dirt. <laughs> okay? But yet, they got, they got 
Saskatchewan. They got Canada and they passed it on to their children. They passed it on, and it was a blessing to all of us that they did that. And that's exactly the same system that's in place here. By the way, it's good, it's good to get to hear some of those stories, young people and us middle-aged people. It's good to he- be able to hear some of the difficulties and trials that people go through to try to bless their children. And children, remember to say thank you for your parents, they weren't perfect, but some of them made some pretty incredible sacrifices so that you could have things easier and have a cell phone in your pocket. Or have a roof over your head and have six TVs. And, and you know, sometimes we're not thankful about that stuff. I'm thankful that my great great grandparents came over from Norway. And Norway was a pretty bad place back then. It's okay now. How bad can it be? It's full Norwegians. But the, uh, you know, they, they made that sacrifice. And, and, and we got, today we got sweet. It's good to have sweet here. And, you know, and she picked up her family and marched across the ocean as well. And that was, that was a little stressful, wasn't it, sweet? <laughs> yeah, very stressful. But, you know, why did she do it? It wasn't because she wanted a better place. She wanted a better place for her kids. Isn't that something? So Jacob, Isaac, Esau, Isaac, sorry, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they were knowing that God was continuing his promise even though they weren't picking it up because they knew that their kids were them. It was all part of the same system, the same sacrifice. All right. Uh, Now Esau, getting back to Esau for a bit, learned that Isaac had blessed Jacob again (laughs) and had sent him to Padam Aram to take a wife from there. And that when he blessed him, he commanded him, do not marry any Canaanite women, a Canaanite woman. And that Jacob had obeyed his father and mother and had gone to Padan Aram. Esau then realized how displeased the Canaanite women were to his father Isaac. So he went to Ishmael and married Mahalath, the sister of Neboeth, the daughter of Ishmael, the son of Abraham, in addition to the wives he already had. So try this someday. Oh, my, parent, my parents don't like the person they married. Let's marry another one. See if that fixes it. Poor Esau. You know, here's a guy. He just, he just doesn't look that far ahead, right? He just doesn't plan ahead. Here he thinks, I can solve this problem by getting another wife. And I'm sure his dad, probably after he says, Dad, I got married to another girl. This time I got married to an Ishmaelite, not a, not a Canaanite. And his dad probably went, eh, not helping. Now I have yet another daughter-in-law to take care of. By the way, that's partially true that he had to take care of his daughter-in-law. He saw the poor guy. He can't think ahead. He can't think past a pot of stew. He can't think past, you know, how can I please my dad? And he just makes mistake after mistake. And here he does it again. And, And so we think he's up to three wives at this point, by the way. All right. Jacob left Beersheba and went out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth and the top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Okay, who's ever slept with a rock under their head? Anyone? I guess, you know, I guess it would be better than on the ground. I'm guess, guessing, but I've never done it. I, I did have to sleep on the floor once. Uh, hard floor, hard wood floor, and that was hard on me back when I was in the 20s. I can't do that anymore. I can guarantee that. But uh, here he sleeps on it, takes a rock, puts it under his head, and then has a dream. And the dream is of these angels going up and down from heaven. Uh, and then he continues, There above us stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, the God of Isaac, I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Here's another blessing. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. That's the exact same blessing we heard uh, given to him by Isaac. Also the same blessing given by, to Isaac from Abraham. And the same blessing given by God directly to Abraham as well. I am with you. And will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. And I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Okay. Has anybody ever had a dream that you know God talked to you through? Anybody? Yeah. No one wants to admit it. Right? Uh, it, this time after time we're hearing about people in Muslim countries who when they are told about Jesus Christ 
they go something to the effect of, oh, I had a dream about him. I had a dream about him. Um, here, Jacob's having a dream. It's not a vision, it's a dream. And the Bible's pretty clear on this. But through this dream, God is speaking to Jacob. And I think there are times that we need to pay attention to what we're dreaming. It might not just be the pizza from the night before. It might be God sort of speaking. Ever woken up and then, wow, I need to pray about some particular issue. And you may not even remember what you dreamed, but your dream might have prompted you to get up and pray. Uh, these are all ways that God talks to us. We don't like talking about this stuff in the West because we're all about the brain and not about any of this mystic freaky stuff. But here's a mystic freaky story of God speaking directly to somebody in a dream. I think it's important to pay attention to our dreams. I don't think you start writing theology textbooks on your dreams. But I think we need to say, hey, wait a minute. Is that something that God is speaking to me about something in my dream? Uh, or is it just a plain old nightmare? Or did I end up standing in my underwear in school again? Did you ever get those dreams? Or was that just me? Never mind. Okay. <laughs> don't you get the dream where you're sitting at your school desk and you're in your underwear and you can't figure out how to get out of the room? Does no one ever get those? Well, that was kind of awkward. <laughs> well, thank you, Bill. He gets dreams of me in my underwear. No, uh, anyways. But you know, God wants it, and, and God is using dreams and, and, and sort of these visions in amazing ways around the world. And so if someone comes and talks to you and says, you know, I had a dream, uh, don't ignore it. Because it might be somebody, it might be an opportunity if you say, you know what, I'm not positive, but that actually might be God trying to tell you something. And here's what I think it might be. By the way, where else do we see dreams like this happening? In the Bible. And God using dreams. And we'll be coming up to near the end of Genesis. It's Joseph. Remember Joseph and his dreams? And we also had another, where is it King, uh, one of the kings of, it was a King Darius that had the dream, or King Nebuchadnezzar? I can't remember now. And, uh, and Daniel tells him what his dream means. You know, dreams, don't discount your dreams. Uh, as an opportunity that God might want to be talking to you, or... If someone else shares dreams, that it might be God wanting to talk to them. And he might be wanting to you, might, might be wanting to use you to help people understand that. Uh, and so here's one of those situations where God wants Jacob to understand something very important. He wants him to understand that the blessing that he got given to him by his dad was from God himself. It wasn't just a daddy blessing, which is a great thing to have, by the way. It was a God blessing. And God was and going to continue to fulfill that promise to not only give him lots of offspring, but to bless the entire world through his kids. Wouldn't a parent love to know, wouldn't you love to know that your kid is going to bless the entire world? The rest of you are going, well, okay, any other options there? All right? But isn't that kind of cool to think, wait a minute, my child, or perhaps my child's child, or perhaps my great-great-grandchildren, and so on. Somebody's going to end up being somebody who brings the gospel to millions of people. Can you imagine Billy Graham's great-great-grandfather would be proud of what Billy did? Wouldn't that be kind of cool? Uh, you know, and that's maybe something that we can think about ourselves as we pass on the blessing to our own children and to our church family. As we bless others, it's encouraging them to be a blessing and will just help make the world a better place because God is blessing. All right. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is, uh, this is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Why did he say the house of God? Is he in a house? No, he's out in the, laying on the ground on a rock. So it's not really the house of God. But he says, You know what? This is a cool place because I got here and God met me here. This is so cool. I'm going to make a big deal about this. So he makes a big deal. He says, early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. So Bethel, El is God, and Beth means house of or home of God. So Bethel or Bethel is the home of God, the house of God, the place where God is. How big was this rock? Because he sets it up as a pillar. I mean, you know, when you think of a pillar, you think, you know, eight feet tall or something. But his pillar was probably about this, this big. I mean, you don't put a rock that big under your head. So it would have been a little whoop. Then you put it away. So, you know what? Sometimes our little memorials don't have to be that big. Sometimes the little memorials of God in our life 
don't have to be that big, but the thing that they are helping us to remember are huge. Why do we put gravestones on people's that we love's grave? Because we want to go back as a monument. We want to be able to go back there and remember not just the place, but what that place meant as far as our relationship. And so Jacob wanted to remember that place because it was there that his relationship with God was really cemented. His relationship with God Almighty was made perfectly clear. And when we go to the graves of our relatives and our loved ones, we remember the relationship. We remember the times that we had with them. We remember the love. And so monuments don't have to be big. But they're kind of important. And so we kind of need those monuments in our life where we remember what God has done for us. And those monuments can be places. They can be possessions. Uh, but above all, they should point us to remembering how good God is and how he loves us and how he cares for us. So Joseph, uh, J- Joseph, Jacob does just that. He took that and he put that rock up there and Bethel, or Bethel, becomes a place uh, where we see time and time again the children of Israel refer to it and come back to it. All right. Then Jacob made a vow saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, I am taking and will give... Uh, the journey I am taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household. Then the Lord will be my God and the stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And all of you that give me and all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. Okay, so just after God says, okay, I'm going to do this for you. It sounds like Jacob's kind of dealing and we- uh, wheeling and dealing here, doesn't it? Like, hey, if, okay, fine. If you're going to, take care of me, then okay, if you take care of me, and it sounds like he's bargaining with God, but it's actually not that. He's actually just reiterating what God just told him. So God just told him, I'm going to take care of you. So Jacob, okay, if you're going to do this, if you're going to do this, this, then I need to respond. And how does he respond? A tenth. The tithe. The T-I-T-H-E. The tithe. He automatically responds to God by wanting to sacrifice something back of what he has to God. His tithe. Did you know that your tithe is just an automatic response to you understanding that God is taking care of you? It's just an automatic response that as you get God, as God gives you what you need, you want to give back to God because you see that He's taking care of you. I think our children should tithe to their parents. What do you think? Hey. Eh? Well, I think in kind of the grand scheme of things, I think that's kind of how it's kind of ends up working because uh, as we get a little older and a little infirmed and perhaps need a place to stay, our children are supposed to be the ones who take care of us and maybe 10% of their life is doting on us as we can't do anything around the house or whatever. That could be or perhaps paying. Uh, So children, take care of your... If you didn't have social services in Canada, if we didn't have CPP and if we didn't have welfare, you know, you kids would be on the hook. Just letting you know. Right? That's the way it used to be. And that's really the way it's been uh, forever. Uh, when someone's taking care of you, our response should be to want to give back. Okay? When God's taking care of us, and he's taking care of all of us, our response is to give back. And we give back in tangible ways, even when God gives to us in intangible ways. When he gives us things and blessings and, and, and a family and a home, we give back to him as best we can, and we do it automatically. Because it's a response of appreciation. What do you do when someone comes over to your house and does something for you, like, I don't know, something you need done? We automatically dig into our pocket and try to give them some money. Okay, except Bill. Everybody else. All right? (laughs) Here, have some potatoes a lot, daddy. All right? Even potatoes counts, though. Right? We automatically think, uh, let's, why do we have that system? Because we are grateful and we want to respond in gratefulness by giving a portion. We couldn't do it ourselves, or, did, or didn't want to do it ourselves, depending on what the job is. We pay. Why is it that we think that when God blesses us that we don't want to give him back something? It's not because he needs it. It's because it's our expression of thankfulness. And so Jacob recognizes God wants to bless him. He says, you know what? I'm going to give you a tenth. And he does. He continues to give God a tenth through sacrifice for the rest of his life. It should be a natural thing for all of us. And it should be something that actually 
comes out of a grateful heart. Remember the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver. You know, can you imagine your kids coming up to you, Mom and Dad, thanks for all the years of taking care of me. Here! Ten bucks. <laughs> but what if the kids come up, Mom and Dad, you took me here. Let me just take you on this cruise. Wouldn't that be awesome? Sorry, that should be not awesome. It should be expected. Uh, did I, should we, here, let's go on a cruise, Mom and Dad. You guys are awesome. You changed my diapers. Let's go. Hey, but if they, oh, you're driving me crazy. Every time I turn around, you need more help getting up the stairs. Urgh. Oh, where's that, what, Michelle? What was the name of that book? I love you forever. I love you for always. Remember that book? It makes me cry. Oh man, read that book sometime. As long as I'm living, my daughter or your son, and then of course, oh, I'm going to cry now talking about. It. Okay, never mind. That's the picture. That's the picture of us with God that we never have to take care of Him, thankfully. But we should be automatically wanting to just respond to Him. Through sacrifice. Is a tithe a sacrifice? Absolutely it is. Okay? God could have said 0.1%, but it wouldn't be, a, wouldn't be a sacrifice. But he says, you know, as an example, here's 10%. Make it a sacrifice. If it doesn't hurt a little bit, it's not really that big of a gift. Right? So let's make it a... You know, when your wife... Okay, I shouldn't say this because it could get me in trouble. But when your wife gets those flowers... She knows they cost a hundred bucks. She knows you can't afford it. But she still goes, thanks. Yes, Kirsty, that's what you're supposed to do. Where's Kirsty? She gets mad. <laughs> right? Oh, thanks. Now, you know, okay, we can't eat for three months, but here's your flowers. <laughs> but you know what? There's a romantic there's a romantic there's an understanding. Hey, it was a sacrifice for me to tell you I love you in these crazy flowers. So let's tell God as, that we love him through our sacrifice. All right. All right. Uh, we're done. I'm, I'm going to show you a chart. Uh, it's going to be hard to see. Um, so this is the chart. So Terah, Abraham's father at the top. And then we got Abraham. And then we got Isaac coming down here with Rebecca. And then there's Jacob right there. And then Jacob's going to have all these kids down here. And that's the, that's the children of Israel. And there's how many tribes of Israel? Twelve. But every time you count the tribes of Israel, you'll get thirteen. Just so you know. Little trivia question. Figure it out on your own. Okay? So there's the children. So this is the family line. And from Abraham, we remember that Abraham didn't have any, only had one kid, and then that took a while or two, counting Ishmael. But and we can follow Ishmael as well. But we can see it starts, it takes a while to it's skinny for a while, and then it spreads out. So let's go backwards. So here's Abraham and Sarah at the bottom. Isaac, Rebecca, and then we're gonna get up to the twelve tribes of Israel. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10. Oh, right, I cheated. I'll show you how that, why that works. We'll get to that story later. So there's the, there's the family tree of Abraham, and we're getting up to Jacob and Esau now. Oh, all right, a couple little wrap-up points. One, sometimes you need to know when to get out of Dodge. Jacob knew he needed to get away from Esau. Why? Because he wants to kill him. Okay? So there are times in our life when we need to realize, hey, I, I got to go somewhere else because uh, I've, I've done something bad or, I've done, or someone else wants to do something bad. So he heads out of time. To, so, he, so Jacob knows he's got to get out of town, goes and sees Uncle Laban. Now, um, Esau, sometimes when you're trying to impress somebody, it can go horribly wrong because you're not, you don't have your heart in the right place. And here's Esau feeling he was rejected by his dad, even though he wasn't, but he thought he was. Goes off and marries another woman. He added more wives. And he added more grief, I might add, in that process. Not that having a wife is bad. I think having more than one is. Um, blessings of God. Jacob has a good night's sleep, and God speaks to him through this dream. And he recognizes that surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And he says, you know what? This was a time when God spoke to me. And every one of us should have times and places in our life when we recognize that God was talking to us. Maybe he was at a church service. Maybe it's this sermon right now. No. Okay. Maybe maybe it was a concert you went to. Maybe it was, now, by the way, tonight, Singing Hills, come on out. These guys are awesome. Um, young people, too, come on out. It's really a really great concert. These guys are awesome. Maybe it's at a concert. When, you know, times in your life where you sense that God was speaking to you, God was touching your heart. And those are your touchstones. Those are your monuments to the times when God is working in your life. Um, 
And let's recognize that God is that God has blessed us through Jacob. The, the children of Israel became the children. Jesus Christ came and, and died and rose again for us. And we are blessed because of that. Let's continue that process of blessing others. But let's begin to watch for those times that God's talking to us. I know some of you guys have been sharing about being in the hospital and stuff lately and by golly laying there in pain and God speaking to you. It's kind of neat. So start paying, we started watching for, watching for blessings last week. Remember that? By the way, uh, Kathy Buckingham complained because she started noticing all the Ford Flexes last week. <laughs> she, sent me a, she sent Penny a note, tell Joe he's a jerk. Uh, now I notice all those. Okay, but let's start watching for those blessings. But now let's start watching for the times when God wants to talk to us specifically through the Holy Spirit, maybe through a dream, maybe through an impression, maybe through some thoughts that come to our mind. Let's be paying attention to when the Holy Spirit is talking to us. Can we do that? Watch for blessings, and then watching for God talking to us specifically. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this story again. We want to let all of our time be used by you to speak to us whenever you want to. And so God, help us to pay attention. Help us to notice when you're talking to us. Help us to notice when you're impressing upon us something that you want us to learn, something you want us to know. And Lord, we thank you for the ways you've blessed us. Help us to watch for those and to continue to thank you for those. And now, Lord, we thank you that you talk to each and every one of us. Yes, through your word. Thank you for your word, which speaks to us every single day. But also thank you for the times when our dreams or our thoughts, our impressions come from you. And may we be paying attention. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's close with some singing. And let's stand together. Jesus, all for Jesus, all I am in heaven and ever hope to be. Jesus, all for Jesus. Soaps and plans, I surrender these into your hands. All of my ambition, soaps and plans, I surrender these into your hands. For it's so
Let's pray. Lord Jesus, as we go, make us a blessing, make us notice blessings, and may us notice you speaking to us through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are dispersed. Be sure to come out tonight, folks. This is really going to be a good concert. Okay? Yeah, never mind. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. I want to help. Bill wants to come to the theater.